We are officially at the last season preview that I've done for all, of all 32 teams. I'm going backwards. I'm going to start at Winnipeg, going all the way up to Anaheim. I, let's, let's tip this camera a little forward. But anyways, we went through all 32 teams. This is our last team, and it should be Anaheim Ducks. So it should be pretty pretty easy because they were terrible last year. They And they they drafted phenomenally, picking up Leo Carlson. And speaking of draft, I was looking at some of their players, and they have so many good players coming up and so many high draft picks too. So and that's one of the things I wanted to go over. And some of the, they're having struggles with two, signing two of them right now, but we're going to go over that in just a minute. But first, hit like, subscribe, and comment. It helps. It really helps for small creators like myself. Um, but let's jump right into it and uh, go over for the Anaheim Ducks. So let's jump right over real quick. Uh, Anaheim Ducks have $16 million in cap space left because they have not signed the two players that I just mentioned, being that being uh, Jamie's Dry, Jamie Drysdale and the big one, Trevor Zegras, who reportedly is being offered three to four million AAV for our contract. Uh, it looks like Pat Verbeek is looking to definitely bridge uh, Pat, er, Zegras at this point. Um, yeah, Pat would be great there. Um, and so we'll see. Um, it, it is, there's some spe spectacle, uh, speculation about how to treat some of your stars in this case, right? Um, with a guy who, like Zegers, who's being like, I think he's 21, 22 years old. Um, a lot of people don't want, a lot of teams decide to go for the long-term contracts because they're betting on the player who they're going to be eventually. Um, but with, because Zegers played very well and he has played very well. Um, we can actually run over his points real quick. Let's jump over. I will jump over to do the depth chart just, just so we can just see his points real quick because he is all the way down at the bottom because he is on the reserve list right now. But he has 65 points in 81 games, a great total. Of course, his plus minus is going to be terrible, but he was draft, drafted ninth overall. So, and again, at 22 years old, right? So the thing about this, if you sign up to a two, three, four-year deal, a bridge contract in this case, um, you're going to have to pay him a lot more at the end of this. And so why why would you offer a small contract contract like that? Why don't you offer him a big contract being like, you know, uh, at, that, at that point percentage or that point uh, pay, especially being a center, I would say probably offer him more like eight and a half to uh, 10 almost. I, I mean, maybe he hasn't earned 10 yet, but eventually he would grow into 10. But I'd say, why don't you offer him eight and a half to nine to a half, maybe even that, around that range for eight years, because then you lock him up until he's 30, right? And then at 30, his value does go down at that point, so so then you so then you can negotiate a smaller contract, or if he wants to stick around and buy into the system, he might take it less because he's already played here for eight years at this point. So at this point, as a young player, he wants to get as much as he can. So why don't you offer them that big contract? So that's my thought process on it, at least uh, when it comes to the the salary cap. So and and utilizing it at least. So they are doing. I do think the Ducks are doing a rebuild a different way. They are shipping. They have already. Pat Verby came in with a couple of pieces. They did hire a new coach in Greg Cronin, uh, which I think is is appropriate, right? And they also brought in a couple of new guys. Uh, being Alex Kaloran brought him on a big deal, a four-year deal, of $6.25 million at 34 years old. I'm surprised he got that big of a contract, but it is coming, one, to California, two, coming to a Ducks team who is not very good, and they're in, again, they're in the middle midst of a rebuild. Um, and as well as they brought in Radko Gudis, the big player, three three years at uh, $4 million, again, 33 years old. So a little expensive, but mind you, they have a lot of cash days because they're not trying to build, they're not trying to ramp up to that future yet. They're still in that rebuilding stage. And so they really need to um, kind of get their duck hat ducks in a row. <laughs> I crack myself up. This is so stupid. Anyways, um, but again, I'm gonna go over some of the players that I think that they're they, they just picked up. They pick up Labushkin in a trade uh, with the Sabers uh, for a fourth round pick. But overall, like no massive trades. I mean, they did trade out Klingberg at the trade deadline to the Minnesota Wild, who he ended up signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs, Maple Leafs this year. But a lot of these guys are just players, right? Are the young guys that are gonna be coming in? Um, they did draft Leo Carlson with a great pickup at the. Uh, at the draft, um, and I and I do want to go over. So one of the things I want to go over the lines real quick, just kind of go over what uh, my thoughts are on that. Henrik Zegras and Troy Terry, I I mean great. Oh, by the way, they also signed Troy Terry to a seven-year deal. Phenomenal, right? Um, as well as just like I said, this is a decent line. Henrik is speeding around for quite a bit. That veteran uh, leadership right there. Kloran definitely moving up on that second line. That makes sense. Moving from Vitrano kind of that helps with your depth right there. Uh, McTavish and Strom. Strom was signed last year. McTavish being an up and coming star. Again, drafting Leo Carlson. There is the belief that he might actually be playing uh, his way onto the roster this year. Um, and so we'll see if that ends up happening. He definitely looks, he potentially looks. He looks like NHL ready, and that's I mean that's my opinion. But again, we'll see how that happens. And then it's kind of just 
uh, drops off at the, at the uh, rest of the third line and the fourth line. So uh, James, Jamie Drysdale definitely is going to need to take a huge step, and Camp Fowler is a great leader to do that with him. And Michael Good is moving up from his third line position on the Florida Panthers up to a second line with Robert Hag, who played with the Detroit Red Wings last year. Um, this whole bottom four is completely new. Owen Zellberg killing it in the OHL. Uh, Lubushkin, of course, playing with the Buffalo Sabres last year, getting that two-year deal. But now I think there's only one year left, I believe. Looking at here, Lubushkin, yeah, one year left on this deal. So, um, again, I, I like this. I think Owen's, uh, bringing in a rookie like Owen Zellberger is going to be huge, and it's going to be uh, crucial for the development of the, the Ducks as an entity, right? Um, as well as Leo Carlson as well. But it's, it's pretty exciting. So this is, I mean, when it comes to the Ducks, they are going through a rebuild. So we're not going to review, hey, I, I think they're going to finish terribly in the league again. I think they're going to be one of the probably bottom two in the league and along with San Jose. Um, the one thing I do want to go over, and I'm actually going to change my screen just a little bit. Um, because I have my logo up there, but I actually made this whole separate logo. I moved my logo just so we can go over a couple of these guys, things. Um, because I do want to go over some of the things. I mean, they're going to be tra trading off a lot of pieces, right? Um, they might be trading off Hat Adam Hendry Henrik. Uh, I don't know if they're going to keep Frank Vitrano as well. Like, I mean, uh, some of these guys are probably Jakob Silverberg if he has any value as well. They can retain on him. Um, there is some potential for they can, they can have these guys um, just. Um, shipped out and because they can get assets back for them but i do want to show you what what i'm trying to focus on right now is they have a huge potential to be a rock star team and this is what i'm excited about for the uh ducks for ducks fans as well as the ducks uh as a as like a, just a team right look at how high they drafted in all these all these um drafts right second overall second overall right here for leo carlson max jones first round 24th overall pick right so that's probably your one of your older uh, first round draft picks, but 2016, right? You have Cam Fowler, that's again old, but they drafted drafted well, first round draft pick. But the up and comings that you have, oh, by the way, going over goaltending, John, John Gibson had a terrible, terrible year. Um, but I still think there's a lot of value in him, but he has till he's here till 2027. So I imagine they're going to try and find a home for him as well. Um, hopefully they can find some, some like somewhere for him at the trade deadline. But he has to be better than he was this year, almost a four goals against average. Uh, and under 900 save percentage, I mean, and 14, 31, that's just tough. So really, he's got to be better. He's got to um, grow more. I mean, he's got to just bounce back, honestly. And it was just a terrible year for the Ducks as well as John Gibson. So if he, if he can bounce back, he can definitely bring some value as well. So um, like I said, I want to go over some of the high draft picks, right? Here you go. 23rd overall, 18, uh, 18 in 2018. 54th, second round pick. 22nd overall. 27th, 19th, 29th overall. 66 overall, so that's uh, early uh, third round pick, right? Um, where and that, that's and there's 33rd overall, second round pick, 59th overall, second round pick, 66 overall, early third round pick, right? High draft picks, 10th overall, uh, Pavel uh, Minichukov, Minichukov, yeah, let's go with that one, haha. <laughs> uh, 34th overall, Owen Zellberger, killed it in the OHL by the way, uh, second round pick, or high early second round pick. Early Warren, uh, no Warren, early second round pick as well. Eh, mid, mid second round pick, right? I mean, you get these guys. There's a lot of like potential. Uh, Lucas Dostal is supposed to be great. I mean, he played, he played okay. Um, in the he's 23, right? So he's got a lot of development. But that could be your your new John Gibson when you guys start to develop, right? But he was drafted in, in the third round, 2018. So it's a lot of good guys. 36 overall, uh, 2020, right? I mean, and then of course you have Trevor Zegers and, and Jamie Jamie Drysdale. Ninth overall, sixth overall. So there's so much potential with these guys that I I don't I mean there's again it's in a rebuild. So what are you gonna do about that? But I think there's so much potential. There's so so much excitement for the team. Um, and like I, said, I used to be a bit huge Ducks fan, right? Um, but it was just one of those where I, I liked Getzlaff and I liked Perry and everything. Um, and I really liked Paul Correa. So this is, I was a really early Ducks fan. This was back when they were the mighty Ducks. So I'm excited for what they're doing. I'm, I'm glad they're going through this rebuild. I think it was deserved. Um, unfortunately, got John Gibson has had to go through it. But I think and I'm a big John Gibson fan too. I was um, a big uh, fan of uh, uh, gear as well. So again, I just think that there's a lot of potential here for this team if they're not ready yet they're making the interesting moves of picking up Kalorn and gourd are interesting but 
at this point you can throw money into a, a money pit essentially because they're not doing anything big right i do think it's robbery they're trying to i don't think it's I think it's robbery robbery they're trying to give zegras at three to four million dollars but again that's how negotiations go right i think that a landing cost are like six after like six for three years right six million for three years makes it more sense for me kind of like a dylan larkin deal i would say that was what his bridge was as well but well no, we'll see um and i think that's kind of what the uh, the thought process because pat verbeek was uh hanging around dylan larkin a lot he saw a lot of the contracts that were given out but i could see something similar to that for zegras but we'll see. Let me know what your thoughts are. Hit like, subscribe, and uh, catch up with you. Love you.